So now we begin a journey of alchemical transformations. I'd like to give a special thanks to the, the book that inspired me, which is Biological Transmutations by Lewis Kovan, and then give some excerpts from that book of how it seems to me that bacteria and fungi do most of the biological transmutations in the elements of water. So here we go. An example of this is where either the hydrogen is added on to, as with sodium here, we get magnesium as a result. Or if we've got oxygen being subtracted from calcium, we get magnesium. Or if magnesium has oxygen added to it, we get calcium. And then calcium with oxygen added gives us iron. So somehow microorganisms, bacteria and fungi, can actually manage to pull apart the water molecule and add a hydrogen or subtract it, or add and subtract an oxygen by a manner which is unknown, but later we'll see quite how that might be possible. Water itself seems to have a vortex nature, as does the element oxygen, and so it is possible that through the vortex action of air and of water, that these cold fusion events might be able to occur. In this animation of a water molecule that has a dodecahedral shape, you can see that there is a vortex actually generated within the water molecule itself, as well as from the oxygen. Then there form these buckyball cages in which uh, energy imprints of different elements or minerals can be caged ions and in homeopathy these water molecule cages can actually be layered upon layer. Here also we can see that there are different radiolara that form exactly in these shapes and sizes which are platonic solids of the icosahedron and the dodecahedron. Here we have some more water transmutations and again, water is the key. By adding or subtracting an oxygen, you can take an element to another. The mitochondria, which are small organelles that could be even bacteria, seem to be able to do transmutations with the help of the ATP. The mitochondria actually can do transmutations of sodium to magnesium, potassium to calcium, manganese to iron and copper to zinc. The mitochondria actually generate the energy and other powerhouses of the cell. Here is an animation showing the mitochondria and there can be many mitochondria in cells depending on the kind of cell they are. Apparently the heart, the brain and some nerves and certain organs have as many as a couple of thousand mitochondria per cell. And it is in the mitochondria that you have the Krebs cycle and this is where the ATP is actually made in the Krebs cycle. As we can see in these different depictions of the mitochondria, there's an inner and an outer cell wall layer. And in between those two inner and outer walls is a hydrogen ion soup. And this hydrogen ion may indeed, if you looked at Walter Russell's work, be pretty hydrogen elements. And they seem to be able to do some pretty amazing things with these pre hydrogen elements that seem to generate life. Mitochondria itself does look a little bit like a cocoon, uh, a metamorphosis, you might say, from one form to another. Solomon Gold Goldfein in 1978 was a US Army materials tech and he was asked to find out whether these actual transmutations in biology did occur or not. And he proposed a theory that the magnesium ATP, adenosine triphosphate, uh, actually created a cyclotron effect by spinning the ATP around the magnesium and then creating many layers, as is seen in these next few slides. Solomon Goldfein proposed that these magnesium ATP have a pretty flat kind of structure with magnesium in the centre of an ATP molecule and that these molecules layer themselves 
in circular planes and stack themselves on top of each other. With a vertical column of magnesium running down through the middle of this, the outside part of the molecule seems to kick the movement of the circular or planar ATP into motion and then it begins to wind up through each layer creating more and more energy and this makes the cold fusion process possible. Now this slide shows a photon as a donut that can take energy in a clockwise or an anti-clockwise spin and spin it to the left or the right. Four different ways of receiving an encoded message. This is from Chris Illett's book showing that a lot of the particles actually have a geometric structure and end up moving or spinning and rotating anyway. This is magnesium structure. Here we can see the mitochondria lining up along the sperm to give it its energy so that it gives power to the tail to actually swim, move and generate a lot of movement for a long time. How many mitochondria does the body contain? Each cell and muscle contain up to thousands. In the mid-90s, George Merkel put out this slide and some information indicating that mitochondria need three at a time to charge up the female and then the female gives birth to three more mitochondria and this is how they reproduce. They also form scrolls or donuts of energy that oscillate to generate their power. Here are some images, one by Dan Winter, showing the energetic waveform of an electron as a donut, an ANU presented by Charles Leadbeater. Here I'm presenting a list of bacteria that actually transmute elements, or as it's often called, bioaccumulation and how can you have more of an element than when you first start? It seems they transmute and often need a seed, be it of gold or of the base mineral that they're actually doing the transmutation into. The bacteria are pretty selective and will transmute usually only one element or bioaccumulate, if you prefer that word, which science doesn't like transmutation, it doesn't happen. There isn't any such thing as actual uh, alchemy, is there? Here's some more bioaccumulation by cyanobacteria. Bacteria subtilis 168 is actually said to bioaccumulate gold. Another form of bacteria subtilis is bacteria subtilis nato, which is really good for the heart and cleaning out the blood vessels, and is vitamin K2 or nato kinase. Then we have another form of bacteria subtilis in the soil, the Nutritech. The company puts this out and it detoxifies harmful bacteria. Here we see more of the natto and natto kinase. So biological transmutation does actually occur and it seems to happen in nearly all forms of life. we're going to move a little bit more into that alchemy, the honey or the gold, if you like, of the monoatomic elements discovered by David Hudson. And more work was done on this, um, especially in the historical contents by Lawrence Gardner, especially with his books on the white powder gold. And in this next slide there are filaments of this monoatomic gold wire that looks very much like the form and shape of DNA. So do these metamorphoses or biological transmutations actually occur? Of course not. That would make us feel like um, things are falling off the chess table, wouldn't it? 